Okay, now to interactive jobs, I guess. Yes, so it's as better a reminder, to just yeah, let's start do it. Working on. Okay. So back to Zemo. Yeah. Okay, sure. so now we're at the point where we're actually connecting to the cluster. So our general strategy for these lessons, we'll try to really quickly go over the main points and maybe do a couple of quick demos, but then leave a really long time for you to do the exercises and practice yourself. And at the same time, we'll be watching the notes and see what questions come up. And then we'll come up at the end and go over those questions and then do demos of the uh, exercises and things like that. Because I think people don't really want to hear us talking. They want to do stuff themselves. At least that's what we always hear. So just so you know, that's the plan for the next three lessons. And second off, we had this poll earlier about are you connected to the cluster already? So if you haven't gotten your cluster connection set up yet, you'll probably have problems today because we're not going over that. Um, if you haven't done the shell practice from yesterday, there might also be a few issues here, but you can read those things and try to catch up, but we're not going over that now. Yeah, and join this Zoom room if, uh, if you have connection problems or something like that. But at this point, I think it might be already a good idea to to go back uh, in your mind or, or when we start the, the first ex exercises to make a connection to Triton. But right. yeah. Mm -hmm. But okay, here we are. So from this cluster schematic figure, with what we're doing right now, we'll be able to use one CPU on one node. Um, yeah, so, but we'll so, expand this later. So, so interactive have, jobs, yeah. Why interactive jobs? Why, ah, why to run interactive jobs? We were talking point. about non-interactivity a lot, so why, why interactive? Yeah. So there's a specific pedagogical reason for teaching this way. Well, that's not the question you asked. So why interactive jobs? So because sometimes you actually want to, like when you're developing, you don't want to have to submit something, wait, check another file and see if it worked. You want to be able to submit C, change the code, submit again, and see it right on your screen with little overhead. That's one very useful case that almost everyone goes through. Also, sometimes like there have been times in my career I've said, okay, I need to process this data, but it needs 200 megabytes to load it. So I'm going to get one interactive job and request 200 megabytes of memory and a few processors. Go there, like load it up in Python, do whatever my thing, and then save it out and then go on with my work. And that kind of thing I've done some before. So why do we teach it this way? Because it's easier, basically. Like it gets people running interesting things and seeing them faster. Okay. So should we try running something interactive? Then? Yeah, let's try. Yeah, this is uh, now like a demo, so you don't have to like follow the commands exactly. Like you don't have to run, run the commands. Uh, right. Oops, sorry, oh. I grabbed the wrong window. <laughs> resize that. Okay. Yes. There we go. Yes. So, okay. So, so you're. I have a terminal here in 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 Triton, yeah. and I'm. Uh, so you and can now... even follow what we are doing. Yeah. So, Simo has cloned the HPC examples repository from yesterday, and now he's changed into the directory. And this is why we spent so long talking about files and directories yesterday because. It needs to be uh, second nature to you now. So, okay, here we are in HPC examples. So let's try running our little Py script. So we can use Python 3, and then we give the relative path to the Py file. So notice we're not in the directory that contains Py, but we're in another place, but that's okay. And then we do it with 1,000 iterations. And remember, we shouldn't be running stuff on the login node, but this takes under a second, so it doesn't matter. 
But this is what I'd usually do. Like I'd say, does the program even run at all? As soon as it runs, I cancel it. Now let's add S run. So Simo can push the up arrow key and that goes up the shell history. So we don't have to go retyping it. And then scroll to the beginning and now we'll add S run to it. S run and let's say memory equals 100 megabytes and 10 minutes. And if CMO pushes enter now, so notice we see something different. It says job, something, something, queued and waiting resources, allocating resources, and it ran. Can we show that it actually ran somewhere else? What if we do S run with, can you type the command host name? Oh, yeah. Just here? Yeah. So host name prints what computer it's run on. And now can you do S run host name? And it's queued. And look, it says something else. It says CSL 48. Okay, is there anything else we really need to talk about? Or is this basically it? Oh, the interactive shell would be good to say. Yeah. So the problem here is that we're waiting for every job to run. So I mean, not very long, but sometimes it can be a while. Mm -hmm. So there's a way we can use S run for something different here. So if Simo does S run, I'll, I'll quickly or, uh, oh. say that like what we did here was that we previously were running uh, like over here. When I run the command host name, it ran here in the login node. But immediately when we use the S run, the uh, the queue system takes over and the queue system sees that, okay, I will want to run something in the queue and it will reserve uh, resources based on the resource request that we have specified and then puts, the, puts it onto uh, some compute node. And I don't know what the compute node is going to be. It's, it's de decided by the queue system, but it ends up here somewhere. Mm -hmm. So this is what we basically did with yeah. the S run. And there's already some questions in the notes about this not working on at some other universities. So yes. if it doesn't work, this is the kind of thing that's different at different sites. So you might yeah, need to add the working. partition or something like that. Yeah, like write in notes and see if someone answers there. Okay, uh, where were we? Um, the interactive shell. Yes. So if Simo does S run and then dash dash PTY, and PTY means pseudo terminal. PTY bash, or yeah, some time, like let's say hour, and then man. Uh, two dashes for mem, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. OK, so if we run this, we request one hour of time in 500 megabytes. But this looks really similar. But if we do host name, we notice we're on the other computer. So now Simo can run multiple things at once. Simo can start up Python, try to do some stuff, close Python, look at the data, start Python again, yeah. and whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Um, what else? Oh. There's a section about. Is there anything else here? There's interactive shell with graphics. That's another section, but we don't need to go. You can read that yourself. Uh, checking your jobs. Should we show Slurm history? Yes, we'll talk about monitoring later on. But Slurm history is is uh well it's a there is a this might be in in some other clusters might be different but in right. maybe I, maybe i need to make it yeah it needs to be wider so i'd say just make it really wider like drag yeah. the other half off the side yeah so basically slurm, slurm is recording everything that's running and yeah i mean can you make the terminal wider yeah. than the shared yeah there so we see basically everything that ran, what command, when it started, 
what it requested, and so on. So you'll explore this a little bit in the exercises, but also two lessons from now, we'll talk about monitoring and do a lot more with this. This uh, SLAM history might also not be available on some places. There you might need to use this uh, SQ user. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Yes, user, which gives a different kind of an output. But uh, yeah. in most most clusters, the SLAM commands should probably be there in in, yeah. uh, in Finland at least. Yeah. If you scroll down to where it shows SLAM history. Yes. Uh, even more there. Yeah. Yes. So we often say SLAM history. And if SLAM isn't available, S account dash long shows you similar information. So we give two commands, one that is a bit more advanced and custom and one that should work anywhere. OK, and with that, there's only a final note about setting resource parameters. So basically, all of the different things we talked about under Slurm, and you can find in the quick reference, you can add to this srun command. So to request more memory, to more time, exclusive, more processors, GPUs, and so on, even if we're not actually talking about them now. But this is the basic interface. And with that said, now it's time for exercises. And we're actually doing quite good on time, I'd say. Uh, there's a, I don't know, I think they're described pretty well. We probably don't need to say much. So just remember that all of these use the HPC examples repository. So make sure you're in that directory when you're running things. And um, yeah. And I would also mention that in the uh, notes, there was a good discussion about like what is the difference uh, between running in the login node and, and in the uh, using S run. And the main difference that mm. we uh, also try to emphasize is that the login node is a shared resource. So that is shared among um, like everybody in the cluster. So it's usually very important that you don't, do not run anything uh, like anything uh, that is uh, computationally heavy on the login node because uh, that will affect other users and and it, yeah. it's not the fastest way of doing it. Uh, so if if you're uncertain where you are currently, because in the terminal you don't necessarily see it easily, where am I? You can always run the hostname command to check am I running it on the login node or am I not? And and then if it's if it says hostname is is the login node, then you know that okay maybe I shouldn't be running it here. Maybe I should use the S run. Yeah. Uh, there's a good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a wrong example here. It's missing the argument iterations. Um, but yeah, so this is a good example of reading an error message. So here it says pi.py error. The following arguments are required iterations, which is a hint that there's something wrong, it needs this other argument, and maybe the docs are wrong. Um, yeah, should we go to the exercises? How long should we give? Mm, well, uh, I'm not certain. Like, uh, I think we should probably uh, give something like uh, 10 minutes and then go through the exercise. So. Uh, 10 is too five. short. And there's, oh, it'll, yeah. it'll also be combined with a break. What if we're back in half an hour? So at 15 past the hour. So there's enough time for a break, exploring stuff. Or, oh yeah, 10 past the hour, maybe. Yeah, maybe 10 past the hour, okay. then we can go through the exercises. In, yeah. And the solutions okay. for those. OK. Yeah. OK, uh, exercises plus break until then we'll, yeah. And you can keep working after that time. OK, so see you.
Okay, I'm putting the notes here. Yes, okay, see you soon. Bye. Bye. Welcome back, everyone. So hopefully you had a break. And if you're still working on things, you can keep working while you're we're talking if you'd like. So there were a lot of questions, but overall, I think it's gone pretty well relative to how it could go some past years. Yeah, in the in the exercises uh, section in the notes, do you want to vote whether you managed to do the exercise or not? Mm. Uh, like, if you had uh, if you did them, or if you had any problems, or if you need more time, because that will let us know what's the status <laughs> currently so uh yeah or if you're not even trying so uh that way we can we can better like know we know if we should focus more on like getting through these exercises yeah okay okay well people are oh maybe we should have also asked do you want us to go over them well let's scroll up to the uh notes and let's see what kind of questions we had does that sound good yeah okay so not just for exercises but all interactive jobs does this need to be larger the text size i would say it's fine okay but yeah leave yeah. leave a note in the notes if <laughs> yeah uh, okay so interactive jobs Interactive jobs, yeah, I'd say the interactive jobs work on very many different clusters. Like it's a fairly standard thing to have. I know some years, for example, the University of Helsinki cluster, there was a different command you needed to run to get them, but it's a thing. Sometimes they're discouraged because by being interactive, it basically means the resources are not being fully efficiently used. But everyone understands that a small amount of resources being used for development is a normal thing. Then the third, to... third question, like we can we can reach out to the software um, when we yeah. get to the, the software, software one. Yeah. We actually get to that. We're talking about that later today, but that's uh, a good question. Yeah. So, and uh, like, if you see any kind of errors that say it is kind of like unable to allocate resources in a valid account or account parti partition combination. So different clusters have different kinds of ways of like separating different types of nodes and different users into their like specific places. So the account means that, for example, in CSC, you usually get an account or project account for each project uh... that you're doing there. So you usually need to specify like which billing unit you want to put the resource or you want to build the resources out of all. But but for example in Alto we don't use them. It's done behind the scenes automatically. And similarly in um the partitions um uh, uh they're like uh, in different clusters you might have different nodes specified to different partitions. So uh, you yeah, in in those cases, you need to check the mm -hmm. the documentation for that specific cluster. Yeah, yeah, and that's why having a cluster cluster quick reference or something like that's good. Like one way that new users can scroll through and see what's specific to your mm -hmm. thing and how to get started. And, the, and also, um, like the question below, if you if you see like you then waiting for resources, that's what it's doing. So it's it's waiting for resources. It's waiting for the correct <laughs> slot to appear. Uh, so it's waiting yeah. for yeah exactly what it's saying on the tin. So it, like that can happen because it's a shared resource, and if all of the resources are in use, you have yeah. to wait. And this is yeah. partially why we don't recommend doing too much interactive stuff because you will wait and waiting while you're sitting there is is annoying but waiting mm -hmm. if you're not sitting there if you're doing it non-interactively that's not so annoying so uh, we'll yeah. be talking about non-interactive stuff after the yeah. interactive session okay uh we submit jobs from the login node yes 
you can actually usually submit jobs from other nodes, but let's just ignore that. So you connect to the login node, you submit stuff, you check the output from the login node. You don't run big things on the login node itself because you slow it down for everyone else. Yeah. Well, to the diner metaphor, you order the food from the like the restaurant hall. You don't order the food from the kitchen. So mm. you don't walk mm. into the kitchen and say that I want a pasta. Like you stay in the main restaurant mm. hall uh, <laughs> and and ask the the person like I want a table and I want pasta and, and then they yeah. organize it for you. So uh, the login node is is the place where you want to like be and do your housekeeping and this kind of like like submitting jobs moving mm -hmm. files around and that sort of things uh, usually you do it on the login node yeah and the next question is pretty similar so yeah i think we answered that yeah and also it's a good thing here like i think in the some question below it's also asking um uh, like like what is the difference like should everything be run in the queue like with s run and everything like that like not everything is computationally expensive like the git clone mm -hmm. for example that we did like or moving folders or moving to a different folder and it's not yeah like you need to think about how big is the box of the like memory how much cpu how much memory does this pro uh, processes use when I run it. When I run a hostname comment, it doesn't do anything basically. So it's it's mm -hmm. like it doesn't cost anything. So it doesn't matter if you run it on the login node. And same with the Git clone and that sort of like housekeeping stuff. But if you yeah. actually need to like cook a food or like in the like or you need to run like an hour long simulation that actually takes time. It takes memory. It takes CPU. And those you want to push to the queue. Yeah. Well, I already discussed the next one. I realized I should have said that was a exercise itself to read an error message, but okay. Um, about the missing argument. Git clone doesn't matter where you run it is. Simo just answered that. So small things can be anywhere. Uh, about the work directory, we'll be talking when we talk about uh, the disks in general later on. But right. for now, let's just work in the home directory. That's good enough for these small exercises yeah okay see and access everyone is that on triton because that shouldn't be the case on our cluster yes yes it shouldn't be the case uh, you can usually see the folders but you shouldn't be able to access them like you shouldn't yeah. you should see the folders but you can't but you not go not inside to, yeah you, yeah you shouldn't have mm -hmm. permissions to go inside the folders if you yeah. see this, like let the let us know or let the managers of your cluster know because that's usually not what you want. Yeah. Like yesterday, you can actually get inside. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yesterday we ran without Slurm. I think we answered that already. Often it happened often that people forget about Slurm. Well, you'd think so because it seems that we're always reminding people of this. But also, given that there's hundreds of users doing stuff, I mean, because it's not that high a percentage, but it's enough that we're talking about it over and over again. So you can get the idea. Get clone login node. The clone runs, yeah, so. Mm -hmm. So this is a good one. So. Where did we get the test code? So at the top of the exercises, it says how to clone it, actually links to what we did yesterday about it. But it could be that you're not in the right directory. So for example, if you haven't done CD to HPC examples, then the relative path slurm dash slash pi dot pi doesn't exist. Or you might have changed into the slurm directory and then you're running it with slurm slash pi dot pi. So this, cluster shell lesson from yesterday. The main point was to give some experience with these directories and moving around and knowing where you are so you can run stuff. So I would really recommend if what I'm just saying doesn't make a lot of sense to you after this course is done, go read that again and see if it makes more sense with a bit more experience. Because this is something that will make everyone's life 
a lot better. And it's worth spending five more minutes or 10 more minutes to know that. Yeah, and, and like you can always run the commands pwd to check mm -hmm. where what is your current working folder. So where mm -hmm. am I now? And you can always run the hostname command to check what machine I'm running these commands in. So those co yeah. like, are good you things to mm -hmm. like get navigate uh, like in in the system because it's always it can be hard using the terminal especially if you don't have uh, if you haven't used terminal in the past to to like get grips of okay where am I when I'm looking at the screen that only says like words and numbers and that sort of thing and and but yeah. You, I would recommend checking the output of those commands and trying to get like bearing of okay, how far am in the tree hierarchy of directories am I, mm -hmm. and which mm -hmm. machine mm -hmm. am I running these commands in? Yeah. The next question: Change from login node to our workspace. Do you mean your storage space or your job allocation with the resources there? So. The storage space is shared among all nodes of the cluster. So it's just like you have it there. And then the commands we've been doing now get you the resource allocation. OK, this is about Olu, which we don't know. Mm. Same error. There's a question about compiling code. We can talk about that when we talk about applications later today. Mm. The yeah, like heavy. If it takes a long time, I usually like if, if if it takes a long time, like longer than you're willing to watch the screen, I usually move it into the queue. Like if I'm not actually watching the thing execute, it's taking too long, and I'm doing something else at the same time. Then it's usually something you could do in the queue. Like I would yeah. give that <laughs> as like a good like rule of thumb. Uh, so like if, if you're not bothering to watch what the output is constantly saying, mm -hmm. it's running too long. Yeah. Okay. Exit login answered. This is a good thing. So we're using this command slurm, which is a custom. So it's not part of slurm itself, but an add-on that someone wrote to make some of the other commands easier to know. So usually in the docs, we've tried to say what the slurm one is and what the equivalent with other things. For example, slurm q versus sq-u user, which is the generic one. Uh, you can ask your admins if you can, um, if they can install it to make life easier for you. Uh, let's see. Maybe we should go on. Okay, if you allocate for one hour and a process finishes in 30 minutes, do the resources get freed? Yes, so if the job actually ends and the monitoring says it lasted half an hour, then the resources are free and you're not charged for those extra resources. So it's okay to give a longer queue time. It might mean it takes a little bit longer for your job to start, but that's okay. Yeah, especially like is... if you're running like a interactive terminal, what we were running here, like like you can put on like an end time there. But usually, like if you let's say you want to run test some stuff out, mm -hmm. you might put like I don't know, like two hours there, because like you don't want mm -hmm. right, right when you find out the correct thing you want to do that it 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 shut down. So. Mm -hmm. You you might want to like overestimate a bit, but usually you want to give it well close to the runtime. But you, usually you want to give it a bit more leeway so that if something goes longer yeah. than expected, it, it doesn't get killed. Yeah. Okay, I guess we should move on because my clock says it's the time. Um, can anyone on the cloud? So yeah, only admins can see or mess with your stuff. The whole system is designed so that users can't interfere with each other. There, I will quickly um, mention there that there are programs such as, for example, Jupyter, that if you run it without like the normal security things that it, it runs, you mm -hmm. you can give by mistake access to other people. So you should yeah. like, yeah, 
be careful when you run something with a web application or something like that because it, it can sometimes mm. be tricky. Normally, Jupyter it gives you this URL that that has this like password there, so mm. you can like make it so that the other people can't use it. But but some of mm. these because it's a shared system, some processes might like if they want to like uh, give access to other people, uh, they might yeah. do it. So. Be, check your application. So, so, yeah. The next question is actually really a good lead for the next one. If I run a program using the srun command and accidentally close my shell, how can I get the results back? Well, that's the thing. You can't. And that's exactly why you shouldn't be using srun for anything that might take a while or that you want to keep. Um, and that's why we do batch jobs, which is what we will do next. So I will add that here. Yeah, the, it's it's basically like interactive basically means that it's only there. It's like only there when you are you are there as well. So interactive by definition is something you do like that uh, involves you being there. Okay. And, and if you are not there, if you close the connection, it will like yeah. close the session. So you shouldn't use those for anything that that takes long and yeah, 